Welcome. The purpose of this tutorial is to review the key elements of the Openings tab. The term Openings is used in Design Builder to describe openings in the main opaque surface construction, such as internal and external windows, doors, vents and holes. During this tutorial, I'll briefly review the glazing template selection, review the key inputs for glazing, roof lights, doors and vents, create and load different glazing types, use the slider control to set the window to wall percentage glazing ratio and finally use the cooling design calculation to show some of the effects of changing glazing types and the amount of glazing in a zone. The project glazing template is loaded at building level in this model. The list of available templates is shown in the info panel when I click below the template header. Below that is the data report listing the attributes of the selected template. I covered reviewing, copying and editing templates in the construction tab tutorial. So here I'll simply select a new template. I'll make sure I'm at building level, then go to the double glazing folder and choose the standard airfield clear double glazing template. This then loads the appropriate data for external and internal glazing. The other main headers in the Openings tab are the external and internal windows, roof windows and skylights, doors and vents. Going to the external windows header, we can change the glazing type and the layout here if desired. I'll leave them set to the template defaults. The key inputs are the dimension type setting and the window to wall percentage here. We can set the glazing from none to fully glazed and any percentage in between. If the percentage glazing option is to be used it's generally best to leave the preferred height option selected as this ensures that the correct window to wall percentage ratio is applied regardless of aesthetic considerations. All the options are described in the info panel here. We can also amend the window height and spacing dimensions by typing in the required dimensions in the boxes here. The window to wall percentage option is often used at the early design stage when optimising the amount of glazing to be used in the building. At the detailed design stage it's often better to set the glazing type to none at building level and draw the glazing onto the model surfaces according to the design data. We should of course utilize Design Builder's data inheritance features to minimize data entry and set the most appropriate type and window to wall percentage at the relevant levels of our model. These could be set from building level down to individual surface level, whilst different glazing types can be applied down to individual opening level if required. The thermal properties of the window frames are specified under the frame and dividers header. The frame type can be selected and its detailed properties entered in the boxes below. This section should be unchecked if the glazing details entered into Design Builder include the solar thermal and light transmission properties of the whole unit including the frame. I'll discuss shading in a later tutorial. The parameters for internal windows and roof windows oblique skylights 
are specified in the same way as I've just described for the external windows. Under the doors header we can use the auto generate tick boxes to create internal and external doors. These can be useful at the very early stages of design but are not normally used for more mature designs where doors are generally drawn onto the required surfaces. Whilst doors are openings their thermal performance characteristics are specified in the construction tab. We can either select one of the existing doors from the constructions library or create a new one in the same way as I described earlier for opaque constructions. You should note that doors are simulated as opaque surfaces so glazed external doors should be modelled as windows. The door operating characteristics such as the extent and frequency of opening should then be set accordingly for natural ventilation simulations. This will be discussed in more detail in a later simulation data tutorial. Vent details are specified under the final header. You'll notice that there's no option to specify external vents because the model is set to scheduled natural ventilation in model options. Here. Using this option means that the total ventilation rate and operating par parameters are defined at zone level. Again this will be discussed when we cover simulation data. We can select and load any of the library vents or create and load our own at the appropriate building level. Like doors, vents are generally drawn onto the required surfaces but can be inserted in the model using the auto generate tick box if required. There is extensive library data in Design Builder, meaning that most common glazing types can simply be selected from the existing data. The system folder includes early stage glazing options which correspond to buildings with different levels of thermal mass and insulation related to the local energy codes. You can also create your own data for glazing if required. I could copy and edit an existing similar glazing type but in this case I'll use the add new item icon in the info panel. Type in the name of your new glazing type and then enter the relevant general information in the boxes below. The glazing properties are defined by specifying either the layers in the glazing unit or by entering the solar properties of the complete window. Using the simple method you specify the solar heat gain coefficient, light transmittance and U value in the appropriate box. Note that when using the simple method you must switch off window frames in the openings tab if the data you input includes the frame properties rather than just the glazing center pane values. To create a double glaze solar control unit using the layers method, I set the number of layers to 2. Then select the internal, external and mid pane layers from the extensive library data.
I'll choose the Pilkington Suncool HP Silver 5030 12mm from the coated folder. A 16mm argon into pane gas and a clear 6mm internal pane. Reviewing the properties we can see that this has a much lower total solar heat gain coefficient which I can use to help reduce summer overheating in areas subject to high solar gain. I'll click OK to create the new glazing type but I don't want to load this at building level so I'll not accept the prompt here. Before I apply any changes We'll quickly look at the results of the cooling design calculation and then compare these after changing the glazing type and percentage in the ground floor blocks. Going to the ground floor open office east zone we can see that the solar gains through the exterior windows peak at approximately 7.6 kilowatts at 8am. Now looking at the open office ground floor west zone the peak gains are approximately 8.4 kilowatts at 5 p.m. We can see from the rendered view in the visualization tab that the fixed external shading at roof level is doing a good job of shading the first floor windows at peak summer design conditions so I'll only load my solar control glazing on the ground floor. In this case I'll only load the glazing on the west side and we'll compare the performance before and after the changes were made a little later. I go to the ground floor west block in the navigation panel and load the solar control glazing. We can apply different glazing types to as many of the different blocks, zones, surfaces or individual openings that we require. Again, we should use the inheritance features in Design Builder to minimise the amount of data we need to enter. We can either use the window to wall percentage controls to set the amount of glazing at building, block, zone or surface level or we can set the glazing to none and draw bespoke windows onto surfaces as demonstrated in the previous tutorial. I'll go to the ground floor east block and increase the glazing to 50%. Going back to building level we can clearly see the effect of this change. I'll now run a second cooling design calculation and review the difference in solar gain through the external windows after making the changes. In the ground floor east block I increased the percentage glazing to 50% and we can see that the peak solar gains through the external windows in this block are around 12.8 kilowatts at 8 a.m. compared to the previous value of 7.6 kilowatts. The solar control glazing was loaded in the ground floor west block. We can see here that the solar gains through the glazing in this block at 5 p.m. are around 3.2 kilowatts whereas they were around 8.4 kilowatts with the standard glazing. The cooling design calculation 
has enabled us to very quickly check the performance of different options giving us highly quantitative data to help inform the design process. In this tutorial I've looked at the key inputs in the openings tab and shown you how to create and apply glazing to your model then how you can quickly and easily check the impact on performance of any changes made. In the next tutorial I'll look at the various shading methods available in Design Builder to help reduce unwanted solar gain.